Hi everyone. Welcome to 30 Minute Buns and Guns. Uh, you can do this class with no weights, so uh, just bring in yourself, you'll be fine. We can add some intensity by taking up uh, some of our moves into uh, bigger moves, maybe a more intensity there. We can add intensity by using weights in our hands. So I'll leave that up to you. If you don't have weights, improvise with uh, cans and bags and use those as weights. Uh, or um, if you're like me, you might have some hand weights and some different levels so you can switch from lighter to heavier if you need to. If you're using those cans, just take some out, put some back in. So lots of ways to, to add some variety and different levels of uh, intensity to help us increase our, our range and our strength. So we're going to start with a march out. We're going to keep those shoulders back. Back feels nice and straight and the core is engaged as we lift those knees a little bit higher, a little bit higher. Start bringing up the intensity level. Arms are swinging forward and back. You might already feel that your breathing is starting to increase and your heart rate. We've got that blood flowing, warming up all our muscles. Inhale, deep breath in and out. Get a good stretch as you're doing this. Inhale and out. Up again and out. And let's take it to a light jog. If you don't like the jog, keep it going with that march. Challenge yourself with bringing your knees up. And if you're doing the job, you can challenge yourself with bringing the knees up as well. So it's your class. I provide suggestions. I demonstrate the moves. And you decide where you want to go with it. Keep breathing in and out through the nose. more and let's bring it down and go into jacks so the arms have full range all the way up all the way down if you're doing this is a higher level intensity jack you're landing with soft soft feet don't slam those heels down and keep your knees slightly bent low impact option one foot is always contacting the floor, and you're just stepping out side to side. So you're going to choose, maybe move between high and low. Two and one, bring it down. And we're gonna go into squats. So here's again where we practice our form. And nothing in our hands. So this isn't about intensity right now. It's about focusing on having our foot so that, sorry, it's our hips over our foot so that we don't have our knees driving forward. So when you're standing, your weight is over your heels. And as you press those hips back, those heels dig in even more, and you can actually try to lift your toes a little bit. Squeeze the buns on the way up. Try to squeeze the inner thighs together. Last one. Okay, now we're not gonna go back to a jog. We're all gonna stay here with knees up. And we've got a little bit of a rotation now. Opposite hand or opposite elbow coming across your body. And again, because we're lifting those knees in the front, core is engaged. Now turn that leg a little bit more so that we're trying to touch the inside arch of our foot. Try to stay tall. Try not to lean into it. Stay up nice and tall. There you go. Now keep touching opposite hand, opposite foot. But now do it behind you. And 
just a little touch or a reach, you don't have to touch. Adding intensity, squat in between. Push up, push up, good. So you don't need to be jumping to have a higher intensity level. You can add it by going deeper into some of the moves, the squats. Watch it out, deep breath. And one more move, so we're just gonna take a little kick to the front. Your kick can be down low, or your kick can be a little higher. We're gonna slow down those kicks because in the middle, yes, some squats. Good. Bring those hands up in front, out. Remember, here's where your kick can be. Still doing the squats. Four, three, two, last one. Shake it out, good work. I'm grabbing my heavier weights, and I'm gonna go into a wide-legged squat. Just come down at first to make sure my foot placement is good and I get to my lowest point and I can still see my toes out beyond my knees. And then I start into my squat, squeeze up, squat and squeeze. The glutes are squeezing, inner thighs are squeezing, shoulders stay back, nice straight back. And we start to raise up to the front alternating arms. So as soon as you get into a move, if you've got weights in your hands and you don't like the weight that you're hanging on to, maybe it's too heavy, maybe it's not heavy enough, make a change. Good. Maybe you already know you're going to change halfway through. So you could try a few with a heavier weight and then go to a lighter. But that's how we progress. We can put a couple that challenge us a bit more and then go where we're feeling a bit more comfortable. Four, squeeze. Three, squeeze again. And again, last one. Turn to one side and go into a knee dip. So let's get the legs first and then add the arms. So the knee on the back leg straight down. Check your knee on the front leg. It's not going forward. When you're all set, start to do a lift. Shoulder height, shoulder height. Control it. Slight bend in that elbow. Good. Four, squeeze. Three, two, last one. Come back to center, wide-legged squat, alternating arms. Lift and lift and squeeze and lift and squeeze. So, not putting any extra weight on the legs. I mean, they are working against the extra weight in our hands, but we can work those muscles even more by squeezing as hard as we can. Squeeze the buns. Makes a difference. Last one. Good, turn in the opposite direction of your first side. Again, let's just do that knee dip. Check your form. Back knee is going straight down and up. Front knee is not going forward. And then we add one arm. So if your right leg is back, it's your right arm that's doing the lifting. Good. Up. And it's a slow move down and slightly past your hip. We don't want to shorten our range of motion or we make those muscles a little smaller. We want them to move through the entire range. One more. Good. 
Here's our last set, wide-legged squat. Up and down, and down. Four, three, two. Last one. Good work. I'm gonna go to a lighter weight. And please grab a drink anytime you need to. We're gonna tap out side to side, just slowly up on that toe. Bring your elbow to shoulder height. Push the arm across your body and your whole body turns, your shoulders, your hips, your knees and toes. You're facing in the direction that weight is going. Now, if you find during this move, you look in your arms down here, maybe that weight needs to come out of your hand. Do the move without weights. Just the weight of the limb alone is adding some intensity because it's going away from the center line of your body. Always your choice. Four, three, two, last one. Keep the legs tapping side to side. Right into our second side. So again, keeping the elbow shoulder height, keeping the hand shoulder height. Extending without letting it drop down. Leaning a bit more if you want. You can feel that through the side of your waist. Engage your core, support your back. Good. Four, three, two, last one. I'm going to keep my light weights because I'm working triceps and uh, I know, okay, here we go. I'm going to go to heavy weights for a couple and then I'll go to light weights. So our legs aren't going to move a whole lot, so I know I'm safe to have them close. Bend your knees, feet under your hips, hinge forward at the hips and engage your core for a flat back. Now bring those elbows up, squeeze them in. Like you're trying to get to the center line of your spine with your elbows. And we press back. Press back with our hands. Try to keep those elbows up. So I'm able to do a couple with heavier weights. And then I'm going to move back down to a lighter intensity. And maybe that will allow me to keep those elbows up a little higher more focus on form than on the weight in my hand. Keep your core engaged. Looking out slightly in front of you on the floor. Four, three, two. Oh, the triceps are talking. Yes, I think they liked it though. Okay, grab a drink. I actually like the feeling of the muscles starting to talk. We definitely don't want them screaming. But if they're saying, hey, I'm here, then that's a good thing. So, moving one set of weights away. We're going into our over row deadlift and then adding the squat, push, squat, stand. Feet under your hips, soft knees. Hinge forward at the hips, so we've got a flat back. We row, those elbows come up high. We extend, and then we squeeze up with the deadlift. Finish with those shoulders down, nice and tall. Over, row, extend, deadlift. Over, row, extend, deadlift. Core tight. Make sure when you're bent over, you're not locking those legs. So keep those knees bent. When you're rowing, elbows high. And the hands change just slightly. So they face in, now to my side, now to my front. So just a little turn of the wrists as we go up into a row. 
over, row, extend, squeeze all the way up, over, row, extend, squeeze all the way up. Don't forget those shoulders, make sure they come back down when you stand. That was a reminder to myself. One more. Good. Shake it out, land back where you were. Start going into squats. Let's adjust those shoulders first. Squat, send those hips back. Send those hips back. Keep your chest open, good. Now we're gonna add the arms, so there you go. Shoulder, press up, shoulder down to your hips. So, that last standing right here, it looks like the same position when you came out of your over row. Right here. Push up. Stand tall. Shoulders. Good. Shoulders. Good. Squeeze when you stand. Squeeze when you stand. Those glutes, the core, inner thighs. Up. One more. Up. Good. Shake it out. We're going to do a couple with both of those moves combined. Over row, deadlift, squat push, squat stand. Here we go. Over row, deadlift up, squat push, squat stand, over row, core tight, deadlift, squeeze, squat push, squat stand, over row, deadlift, squat push, squat stand, one more set all the way through, over row, deadlift, squat push, squat stand, great. I'm going to keep one heavier weight and uh, adjust as you need to, you might want to grab on two weights in one hand. So, weight is in my right arm, I'm going to take my, sorry, my right leg behind me. So same side of the body. And I'm gonna tilt forward as though I'm gonna put the weight on the ground, but I don't. So it's like a half a pendulum. So the same cues when you're leaning away from the center line of your body, your core is engaged, support your spine. What we want to try to prevent is the hip opening up and shining to the right. So I'm trying to have my hip creases continue to point down to the floor. The standing leg, that's actually the one that's doing the most work. You're starting to feel it maybe in the glutes. Just check and make sure that knee is soft. Here's our last one. Perfect. Walk it out and when you're ready, weight is in my left hand and my left leg is behind me. Right leg is my standing leg, and then make sure that we've got a slight bend. Ground the right foot. Half a pendulum move here. So anytime you need to, touch down. It's okay. It doesn't matter if you lose your balance. Think about your hip creases facing the floor, not opening up to the side. Good. Can we do four more here? Do as many as you can, force your target. Two more. Standing leg doing the work. Yes, it's talking. Oh, there we go. Great work. Another drink if you need one. on to a lighter set of weights and we're going to alternate our touches back arm on the same side going forward as the leg goes back everything on the right side everything on the left side the right side the left side core tight because we're leaning 
we're going to slow down a little bit and add intensity. So doing a squat in the middle. It's the legs that are getting us down and up. The shoulders stay stable. So they do not swing up and down. They only go up and down because the legs are doing it. Now take those legs back again. And then if you want that extra intensity, it's a squat and a squeeze up, squeeze up, squeeze up. Pretend there's an imaginary set of hands on your shoulders that's not allowing you to swing. Movement comes from the legs, core tight. Oh, those glutes are talking again. <laughs> And we'll do four more, three, oh, she's counting slow again, two, one more time, one side, then the other, yeah, okay, <laughs> and after that glute workout, maybe we're welcoming a squat, and let's just do a little pulse, so not a lot of intensity, but when we do this pulse, we never really let go of the squeeze. You can just hang those weights down in front. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your inner thighs. Now we're gonna slow it down. It's gonna go down and up, down and up. Change those arms. It's in and out, and in and out. Make any adjustments you need to in weights. Heavier or lighter, none at all. When those hands go all the way out, never straighten the arms. So that cue I use for the knees, keep them soft. Same goes here for the elbows. We never take those uh, elbow joints to a full straight position. Squeeze those legs, don't forget them. Four, three, two. Keep the legs going, keep the legs going, good. Yeah. If they are getting tired and you need a break, come out of your squat, otherwise try to keep going. Now we're gonna go in and open, in and open. When you open, same thing. I don't have those arms fully straight, but what I am doing is really squeezing shoulder blades. So squeeze the shoulder blades together. Squeeze, squeeze as well as glutes. Good, two and one. Excellent work. A long stride again. I am going to double up my weights. Or maybe you just want a single one that's heavier. We lean slightly forward. Hand down, elbow. So it's a one arm row. And we can bring the leg down with us. If you don't want to, keep your legs standing still as the arm does the work. Or we can do a combination, just the arm and the arm and the leg. When you pull up, keep the elbow close. One more. Good. Second side. You know the move, you know the options. Make the weight someplace where it's comfortable and safe for you. Just the arm, the arm and the leg, or some combination. It can be one with the arm, one with the arm and the leg. Elbow high, arm in close to your upper body. Couple more, core engaged, we're leaning. Moving that foot around for balance. One more. Excellent. 
All right. We're going to do just a little bit with uh, standing. Standing core. So a weight in each hand. Choose one leg to stand on. And let's start to lift the knee up and down. You can touch down or you can hover the foot, try not to touch. Standing leg, keep the knee soft. Go slower as we add a little bit of rotation. Those weights just add a little bit more intensity. They're not too far away from center of the body. We're not asking the body to to push a lot more than our own body weight. Last one, bring it down. Second side. When you're ready, start to lift that knee. Touching or not to the floor, your choice. Slow down a little bit and add the extra rotation. Core engaged because we're lifting a limb to the front and because we're rotating. So we want support through the core on those moves. Three, two, and one. Great work. Okay. We did half a pendulum before, and now we're going to do the full pendulum. Choose one leg to stand on. Bring the leg in front of you, and let's pull those toes back to our nose. We slowly bring the foot down, nice and straight, and then we tip. And it's your choice how far you tip. Come back to straight. We lean back a little bit with the upper body and we can lift that leg maybe a little bit further to the front. Arms can be out for balance. Arms can be in close to the body. If you have a chair and you'd like to have a little bit of assistance with the balance move, feel free to lean on something. This isn't fast. Your core is engaged. Soft knee on the standing leg. Lots of reminders, keeping your focus on how your body is supporting you as opposed to how many of this have I done and how many are left. And that's our last one. That's part of the reason why your instructor chatters is to keep you focused on something else. So that you're not thinking about, I want to stop, I'm done, I don't like this move. <laughs> so stick with me. Why do we work on balance? Because it is one of our abilities that gets challenged more and more as we age for a variety of reasons. So let's train, let's strengthen. And let's be prepared. Last one. Good. Bring it down. Deep breath in. And up. And up. And up. Come into a wide-legged squat. Supporting hand on one thigh. Reach up. And then lean over to one side. And get a full body stretch on that open side. Come back to center. Other hand on your thigh, reach up, second side, lean over. And come back, good work. Bring those feet in a little bit. Bring those hands out front. Pull away from your upper body, feel the stretch through your neck, shoulders, upper back. Release it, flip your hands, thumbs are down, and now press forward again. You're leading with the heel of each palm. This time feeling the stretch down the outside of each arm. Press, press, press with the heel of your palm. 
not with the fingers. Bring it down, shake it out, grab on behind you, squeeze, shoulder blades squeezing into your spine, chest nice and open. Shake it out. And going into a stretch for the tricep. So again, you can be going straight back with your hand landing between your shoulder blades. Some of us like to stretch across our body. Whatever you're doing, here's where you're focusing. In the back of the upper arm, this free hand is a support, but it's not a pull, it's not a push, just a support. Bring it down, and wherever you find your stretch on the second side. Bring it down, good. Those legs, we're going into a nice long stance. Your feet are on railroad tracks and both are pointing straight ahead, whatever is the front of the room for you at the moment. We lean forward, core engaged. The back leg has a soft knee. Maintain the soft knee as you really press that back heel into the floor. So it makes your focus just on that one body part knowing that you have to keep the knee soft. And what you should feel is a nice stretch and lengthening in the calf of the back leg. Bring the shoulders back over your hips, up onto the ball of your foot. Press forward with your hip creases. You can stay up here, you can sink down to whatever level you want. It increases the lower you go. Let's bring those hands into cactus arms. Squeezing shoulder blades in. Come out of that. Step in halfway, hands now on the back thigh. Sit back in that imaginary chair. And we're going to pivot onto the front heel, lift the toes towards your nose. Front knee is a soft knee. It's not flexed, it's not hyperextended. Bring it down, roll through your back nice and slow, come up. Oh, shoulders roll at the end and finish. And we switch sides. Switch the leg that's in front. Start again with a nice long stride. Soft knee and press that heel down on the back foot. Really press without straightening the leg. Feel the stretch in your calf. And just don't just look down and check and make sure that my Feet are straight, my back foot hasn't gone out on an angle. Bring your shoulders back up onto the ball of your foot, press your hip creases forward. Stay right here if this is where you're comfortable, or slowly go down as low as you want to get a more intense stretch through the front thigh. This time we can put our hands in our back pockets, and again we're squeezing shoulder blades and elbows in. Release, come up, step in halfway, hands on the back thigh. Sit back, keep the chest up and open. Pivot onto that front heel, toes back towards your nose. But this front knee stays soft. Core engaged. And down and roll through. Last stretch for our quads. Leaning against something or working on balance. Grabbing onto your pant leg over the top of your foot. Press your hips forward as you squeeze your glutes. And you're feeling the stretch down the thigh. Quad stretch. Bring it down, second side. If you're working on balance, your arm is out. It helps a little bit. Your standing leg is soft. Bring it down. Deep breath in. Let it go up, let it go down a bit more, and up all the way on your toes, reach for the ceiling, and come down. Good job. Have a great day, thanks for joining me, and we'll see you again. Take care.